Happy New Year, golf friends, and welcome to our inaugural V1 virtual summit. This is our second session of the day. Uh, we have an exciting two days ahead of us with an incredible lineup of guest speakers, including some of the world's best golf instructors. To see the full schedule, check out the link in the chat. You will notice that our girls will put lots of stuff in the chat, lots of links um, if you're looking for anything. Just have a look in the chat. If you need anything, ask them for it and they will populate it right away. We are offering PGA, MSR and LPGA CU credits to all coaches attending live. If you forgot to register with your PGA or LPGA number, email marketing at V1 Sports, um, your PGA, LPGA member number and they will submit them for credit. You have to attend live to get the credits though. Please remember that. The recordings of these webinars will be available for replay in the next few days on our YouTube channel. Um, it'll take on a little bit to edit out Jake and I's cuss words. After we do that, they will post live to the YouTube channel. Please subscribe there. The girls will put the link in the chat window. To all the folks that are joining us, Jake and I love ham and egging and answering your questions live. Please <laughs> post them in the window. Um, Jake is obviously a expert on teaching, teaching juniors, using the pressure mat, teaching tour players. Um, this is an hour where we have his undivided attention and we would love to pull everything that he knows out of his brain. So please put your questions in the chat. I am Mandy Von C. I am the regional sales manager for V1 Sports. I am born, raised and based right here in sunny Charleston, South Carolina. I support golf instructors and golfers by providing video analysis software and hardware for golf studios, including my favorite technology, the V1 Pressure Mat. I host a weekly webinar series called Tuesday Traces. Jake was one of my first guests. We screwed up a lot of them back then, but now we're pretty good at. Please join us Tuesday at seven. I'm really hoping I can twist Jake's arm to join me again soon. Um, today, this afternoon, I'm very excited to welcome my good friend, Mr. Thurm to the virtual summit. Jake has formerly been named, formerly been named one of the best young teachers in America by Golf Digest for three consecutive years. Formerly, we should point out because he is unable to win that award. He is too old. I'm so sorry. It's a mistake win it. because, well, I'm actually aging backwards and that's what the Golf Digest doesn't understand. So. <laughs> oh, they don't understand that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Jake, so you like, Jake Button. Had, I had to change my script because I had to change to, to make it formally. He used to be the, the best young digest in America for three years in a row. He cannot win that anymore. Although I have no doubt he will win other teaching awards. He is highly <laughs> regarded in Chicago land golf, golf circles and nationally for that matter. Jake is the Midwest director for the USA Junior National Golf Team and director of the Nike Junior Golf Camp at Fresh Meadow Golf Club in Hillside. He also operates golf schools at Ruffled Feathers Golf Club in Limont and Atletico Performance in Oak Brook. He is all over the place. Um, he has the largest Nike Junior Golf Camp in the country um, and the largest USA Junior Golf Team. He is definitely one of our pressure mat, ex pressure mat experts. He definitely does a lot of really cool things with juniors. And there is no one that has put more tour players on the pressure mat than Jake. Jake, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your thank time. You. Thank you. For thank you for that. Thank you for that amazing introduction. That that uh, that already is better than the last time you and I spoke. So <laughs> I actually found this like right before I got on. This oh, is, that's this so is cool. actually my yeah. It's my credentials from last year because we're uh, yeah. I'm down in the man cave. This is actually not a faux scene behind me. We're down in the man cave, and um, all the men can appreciate this. The urinal area, which is next to the bar, we're actually. Uh, fixing that up in there. So it's a, it's absolute mess that way. But while I was going through the boxes, I find this and so it's official. It looks so like you have a beautiful a, golf Two years studio. in a row. Well, thank you. And uh, soon to be one uh, in the in the garage again, thanks to uh, Brian Finnerty and V1. So I awesome. appreciate that. I can't awesome. wait to shoot some content in there. Um, it's uh, and have Ashton hit a lot of golf balls in there too. So Awesome, awesome, that is so cool. So um, yes, Jake has got a golf studio behind him. He is all mm -hmm. over Chicago. Um, you are definitely running and working with a huge number of juniors. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that looked like as far as during COVID, how different that was? What's Oh, yeah, what's... yeah, totally. So um, my educational background, which uh, some people know, some people don't. If you only know me from golf, you probably don't. 
Um, my undergrad is in clinical psychology as it applies to child and adolescent psych. So basically, I worked for DCFS uh, or I interned for DCFS as a child abuse investigator for 300 hours. Um, I was also a respite worker for the DuPage Board of Health that worked with mentally ill children, the top 13%. So basically, if they're in that program, these are high risk kids uh, with a lot of problems. And I did that right out of college. Um, I mean, I knew my 75s weren't going to play on tour, trust me. So th there was no thought of that. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to work with kids. And um, you know, people on the behavioral sciences uh, uh, are owed our thanks and respect and appreciation. It's a very tough life. And I realized quite quickly that I, uh, for lack of a better word, wasn't tough enough to do it. So it brought me back to my love of golf. Um, and uh, really what I set out to do now, I never intended to live in Chicago as much as I was born and raised here. You could tell by the accent, or as I like to call it, how people should speak. Um, anyways, the uh, I never intended to live here. Uh, I married a, a, a Wheaton girl, and then the rest is history. So um, she wasn't going anywhere. So uh, I always wanted to do something. And the fact that it is where I grew up, I wanted to make my biggest impact in golf in junior instruction. I had no ambitions uh, towards teaching tour players. That happened very organically. And that's been great. And I love that. And I usually speak on those things. And I have to give credit to Kelly. Kelly last year said, we want you to speak on juniors. And I go, really? No PGA Tour nerd stuff? And she goes, no, we just want you to talk about juniors. And uh, to be honest with you, um, you know, I see a lot of my friends from around the world because I have spoken London about four times, stuff like that. Uh, and around the country. It's my favorite thing to talk about. It's where my true passion is. I feel like I connect back into my education. And um, yeah, we do things a little bit different, but if uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that teach a lot of juniors that have programs. So if I can give you one idea today, then I'm very happy to do so. Awesome. That's really, I love hearing about your background and your passion, that that's where you started. Um, yeah because you're definitely doing some super creative things with the juniors. And I know that's why you're really passionate about all those cool things that you're doing with them. So um, yeah, Anna, do you have, do you have, there's a very special junior. We've got to show the, the video. <laughs> Anna, can you share Ashton? And you know, it's really cool. Um, Brian Mogg was on earlier and he said that he likes to make, you know, friends along the way. And I say, I like to say, okay, here's Ashton. So this is Ashton. This is Jake's sensation. Look at this, you guys. There's one, the fist pump. And there's two, but wait this for the was fist pump. Yeah, this was consecutive. To, he was just on fire. I was like, what's going on? So. Oh, so good. It's so good. <laughs> so that is Jake's youngest. Uh, yeah. We can see that he has a, a really fun home life as well with three young boys playing in that room behind him. Um, t tell us about that video. So um, it's, it's so funny. Uh, all right. So working with some tour players, um, especially PGA Tour, LPGA would be a different story. But with PGA Tour players, I'm not saying that there wasn't any mothers. Uh, Chip Beck actually would tell you his mother introduced him to the game. But mostly with the guys I've worked with, it's been about fathers and sons. And um, it's, to say the least, um, I've seen some strained, and remember the psychology background, right? So um, I've seen some strained relationships. Nothing bad, nothing bad. And, uh, but I've seen some strained relationships with fathers and sons. Um, everybody always asks me, so are you going to or, you know, is Ashton going to win the, I, I haven't even done the math. I have no idea. Is it like 20, 30 something masters or something? <laughs> and I, I, I go, listen, I have three boys, right? And I, and me, so that's four. There's my foursome. So I, I've told people this, um, it would be a tremendous success for me in life uh, it, it, to play golf with my three sons. Um, it's a great opportunity. Like, I, I mean, I don't have any four hour phone conversations, right? So it's a great opportunity to talk to them, to interact with them. I'm sure they will be good players, but to be great, that's their choice. So to fast forward to Ashton, um, 
I don't, I think mama was his first word, but definitely a second word was golf and ball. And, uh, and it's interesting once he hears the garage open, when I come home, doesn't matter. Uh, as long as he's up, he starts yelling, da, da, da. Uh, and he said, basement, you know, and stuff like that. So every single day, as soon as I get home and I don't have time to, I mean, I could take my jacket off. That's about it. I don't have time to eat. I have to take them down here. And we, we, that what you saw is what we do every single night. Um, and, um, so yeah. Th and then the story on that was, I said it a little bit earlier and then I, I we figured out the fist pump because I don't, I don't fist pump. So he didn't get that from me. Um, so every single <laughs> evening, that's, that's a little glimpse into what we do. Um, he's always making swings, uh, at Christmas, he opened one gift and was done with it. He grabbed his club and it wasn't the gift, his old club and went in the other room and started swinging. And we're like, you have, you know, a plethora of <laughs> gifts left. So he, I would tell you this for all the dads out there, um, uh, for all the mothers out there, for all, all the ones that are, are golfing in the therm house. Now this may not get your PGA tour card, but again, to me, success would be playing golf with all three of my sons. Um, golf is the reward in our house. That, it, it, that, that's the best way I can say it. Um, we always make it fun. Uh, there is some competitive things. Um, I put myself at, sometimes at a severe disadvantage, right? Because I'm not going to give it to them. So I might play left-handed. I might play on my knees or something like that. And they get a kick out of it. So golf is totally the reward if and when they ever. And uh, another piece of advice I would give you is that uh, all of my sons have been coached by other people than I. So people that either A, work for me, or B, uh, are in the same vicinity. There's a golf course that's close uh, to our neighborhood, and I know the junior coach there, and I think he's great. His name's Steve Keeler, if he sees this. Um, my sons have been coached by Steve, not by me. So I get to be dad. I get to have some fun uh, with them. And then the fist pump. I don't pump my fist. So uh, Allie was like, uh, uh, where'd he get that? I go, I have no idea. I go, maybe he saw, you know, Charlie Tiger or somebody. Saw Charlie yeah, or, doing it. yeah. And we did watch some of the PNC and uh, then we finally realized it because, uh, and you'll hear it turn on the golden tees over there and you can see that in the video. So every so often, probably once during this, you'll hear the golden tee music. So anytime you make a putt, you hear the sound and anytime he hears that sound, he'll pump his fist because he got it from golden tee. I love so, it. So he got it from a video game that you would find in a bar. So I brought a baby to a bar. I like That's it. That's the story Perfect. on the, on the and you, Here you are sharing junior golf knowledge to all of the <laughs> hundreds of people that have tuned in. Great. So, you know, my next question, which you kind of already answered, was advice for parents who are raising and coaching juniors. I'm a mom. I have two sons. Um, one is a master fisherman. One is a really great golfer. What, what is your advice for me when I drop my kid off at a golf lesson? Sure. So um, I'm, I'm going to actually go slightly before that because everybody on here gets these questions like you're inundated with these requests. So the first question I am always asked by parents is when do you start your child in golf instruction? And then I answered this way and then they laugh and I wasn't really trying to be funny, but um, they go, so when should I start my kid in golf instruction? And I say, I don't know. How good would you like him to be? And then they laugh and I like, nah, how, how good would you like them to be? And then they go, well, I just want my child to enjoy the game. And I go, they stand a much better chance of enjoying the game if they're good at it. So uh, then they go inevitably, right? To, to maybe to attempt to one up you a little bit. They, they go, well, I don't want them to get burnt out. It's not like I want my kid to play on tour. And my answer to that is don't worry that probably won't be a decision you'll ever have to make, even if you're in my programs, right? So um, that's, that's the thing. Um, we, my instructional programs at my facilities, we, we take them as early as four years old. Um, really? I've seen some, oh yeah, yeah. So that would be our junior academy that meets on the weekends. To say that's an hour long is a bold statement because we do a lot of safety stuff. That's probably about 40 minutes and that's probably all they can handle. And the funniest thing is, we, uh, uh, pre pandemic, um, now the parents can, you know, we encourage the, uh, the parents to actually stay for that. And all of my instructors, my junior instructors talk to the parents about what they can do. So basically 
I, what I what I think is missing in golf instruction with it comes to juniors is, um, you know, I, I've always heard this statement. Yeah, I had him hitting it really good, and then he went uh, and practiced around his dad, and now he's all screwed up. Um, you know what? Your your goal as an instructor was never to make the son or daughter not play with their parents. Your so coaching juniors is also really about coaching parents. So you, the best thing you can do for the parents. Especially, and by the way, there's worse things than a parent who cares. Trust me, okay? So, so those golf parents are actually your target market. So uh, as much as you rip them, those are the ones you should listen to the most. So if you can get them on your side, if you can get them seeing uh, their child's golf swing, golf technique, whatever, through your eyes, then honestly, um, they're going to spend more time, especially at that age around them, than they will you. So um, I think that's a key component that's often not talked about too much is we go right into, oh, we, you know, grip the club this way, aim this way. Um, you need to get the person that's going to be around them the most. And by the way, that person is the one that's dropping them off or there or watching you, right? That, you know, like this, like they're watching, what's he saying? <laughs> I don't know. You know, so that's the person they'll be practicing with. You have to get them on their, on your side immediately. Right. And, um, and again, that's the person that will also complain the most. But those are the people that I've, uh, my, my program has evolved over time and it's evolved from the comments that a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, find off putting. I mean, my, what my programs are based off of is criticism. So I listen to quote unquote, the golf parents. And instead of saying, well, I'm going to just, I know, and I'm going to just do what I'm going to do. If I get enough of them, then I have to I have to change because that's what my customers are asking me. So uh, that would be that'd be one of the things I would bring up on how to build a golf program is to is to listen, you know, and change with change and as change. necessary. Yeah, totally. I mean, God, we totally changed everything about the way we taught golf in 2020, right? Um, totally. I have a Kevin O'Connell's asked a great great question, and you're so politically correct most of the time. <laughs> Um, how do you deal with parents who want to stand in on golf lessons and try and get involved telling the kids what to do as you try and teach them? Um, so gosh, I, maybe I shouldn't throw Scott Hamilton under the bus, but I'm going to, sorry, Scotty. Um, and, and by the way, I don't have the, in me to do it, but, um, it, to my knowledge, he told a parent once after the parent had told them everything their kid needs to do. And it took like 10 minutes, like he needs to do this. He needs to do that. He needs to work on this. This isn't good enough. Scotty, and uh, as the story, as the legend would have it, um, <laughs> just stood there, shook his head. It was across his desk and finally said to him, he goes, is that it? And then he goes, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. And he goes, okay, good. He goes, you're in the paying chair. You're in the paying chair. I'm in the coaching chair, right? So um, I, again, don't have that to do that to uh, a parent. But what I would tell you, is what do you do with the parent that is over? And, and by the way, certain cultures, certain cultures, that is the way uh, that they operate. And again, <laughs> to fight that would mean that they're probably going to go to a different academy. So I don't fight that. Um, what I do is again, I try to get them on the, my side. I, I explain the why to them, but never to the child ever. Because to, children are inherently more coachable than adults. Parent, uh, parents, uh, adults in general always want to know why. And the funniest thing is the information uh, doesn't lend itself to any revelation. It just serves as conviction to get to proper training. So when they ask you the why, they're really asking you the why, like, why would I do that drill? Why would I use that training aid? Because to be honest with you, when I use it, I don't want anyone to recognize me. It's embarrassing, right? Only, only an adult would do that. So um, my, my advice to you for the overbearing parent is they're usually an overspending parent. So uh, you got to keep that in mind. You have to get them on your side and I encourage it. I don't mind anyone watching me uh, teach. I, I have people that shadow me all the time. I have parents. And by the way, you know, the funniest thing is the parents that were so into the first few lessons, I developed this level of trust with them and then I never see them again. And, and it becomes a thing like, instead of and i actually will teach them how to get out of arguments with their with their child like you know i'm like well if he's struggling with his swing don't try to help just say what well what did coach say uh, jake's <laughs> a four jake's a four-letter word use it you know there you like, go 
have them curse me out and you just be you just be mom or dad. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, if I were dropping either of my sons off at a lesson and you and I was giving you a hard time and you told me to just come and do what you're going to have the students do, then I would walk away because I've received some videos of your warm up uh, for some of your junior golf. Anna, can <laughs> you um, hopefully the audio will play. Jake put some really fun audio to most of his activities. We have a few videos that show um, how Jake gets the kids warmed up. Let's see if we can get this audio to play. So it's not gonna play the audio, but this is how Jake is starting a lesson. So if I'm a mom and I'm standing there and you're telling me I have to play the same <laughs> rules as the students, I am leaving my kid and I'm coming back at the end because I am not trying to plank in 20 degree Chicago weather. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think this was to the theme of Rocky. It is. Uh, that was one of my coaches singing uh, or uh, standing there. Um, so, yeah, uh, basically this, uh, I learned this a while ago when I, and there might be a video on here where uh, I bet a kid $100 he couldn't hit a pole. And sure enough, he did. Um, this is a kid that plays on the AGA, AJGA, but yeah, I mean, he did it when he was nine. So it, that's one of those moments where you're like, okay, this, this, this kid's uh, a little spe something special. So, um, and then I realized that I shouldn't be gambling with children. So uh, what we start doing is actually, uh, we don't call it this, but we, we gamble with fitness. Okay. So in other words, uh, the other, it, there's other pictures uh, of me doing, um, of doing wall squats of me do, and, and, and of coach uh, Jeremy Smith. And we'll talk about him because he oversees all fitness. He's a DPT who runs his own clinic and he handles all aspects of fitness and motion, individualized workout programs, speed programs, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. He's also physically screened all these kids, all my clients, all my sport players, blah, blah. But anyways, uh, we, we, we quote unquote gamble fitness. And if they succeed, I do it. And Lord knows I need to do it. So, um, <laughs> so just because you see them doing it and before you think I'm this awful taskmaster, um, there is plenty of pictures and videos of me doing it as well. And, uh, and I welcome that. So, yeah, okay, so I changed from, my mind, Jake. Yeah. If I get to add to the the count yeah. for the students to make you do the work, then I will play. But I won't. Oh no! Count. But then you're doing it too, though. <laughs> right. you're gonna do it too. Yeah, and I guarantee you can plank better than me. So, <laughs> right, maybe. Um, so, can you talk to us a little bit about the difference between? coaching juniors and adults. I mean, you teach a yeah. lot, of, of course, the largest juniors, but you also teach multiple tour players and multiple tour players that are playing a lot. I mm. know um, our mutual buddy is playing a lot. What's the difference in how you're looking at those two projects? So that's, that is, that is a great question. And that is the question. Unfortunately, I'll start with that. And this is a comment about PGA tour players. So I usually make a joke that my degree in child psychology helps me more with tour players than it does with juniors. Um, but uh, what I will say is this, unfortunately with tour players, I wish it was different. And I think, and I think someday I will have this relationship uh, with one, if not a few of them, I come in as a fixer. Um, it, like I'm broke, fix me. I don't know how broke they really are if they've been on tour for 10 years and 27 years, whatever, and have never lost their card, consistent cut makers. So I don't actually believe them to be broken. So I'm always brought in as a technology expert consultant, fix me, I'm broken, and hopefully I do my job and then maybe it's over or, or you know, uh, I've been, I, I've had a lot of different experiences with there. I, I've had consultation work with other coaches. I've had players that had me on retainer, so on and so forth. When it comes to juniors, um, I, I, would, I, I go back to the statement I said before, children are inherently more coachable than adults. And again, that goes with, with PGA Tour players. Um, this goes back to the respite program. A respite program, for those that don't know, is a mentorship program. So actually, that's how I take it. Um, I take it as a mentorship program with aspiring juniors and trying to make an impact on their life. Um, we won't get into my daddy issues but I should probably be on a pole or something over there. Um, we won't get into uh, my dad, but uh, the, my would-be fathers when I grew up, 
um, were actually PGA professionals. Um, they just saw a kid that practiced a whole bunch. Maybe he wasn't super talented, but he, he worked super hard. So um, I'll give a shout out to them in case they're watching. Uh, that would be Billy Clems, who's PGA, uh, Bruce Stoller, PGA, all at Arrowhead. And by the way, Kevin Streelman grew up at that course too with those as uh, mentors. And um, Lou Salardi is another one uh, who is my coach in junior college. Uh, these would be, uh, whether they knew it or not, they were, all, uh, they were all my fathers without knowing it. So um, I really wanted to create a program and, and have, I wanted to be that for junior golfers. So um, to say that we fix their swings, we don't fix their swings. In fact, I encourage my coaches, especially when they're in a competition, to not go run over there immediately and quote unquote fix them. Because usually in the moment, it actually doesn't work anyways, right? I, I like them to kind of come up with it organically. And I always remind everybody when they struggle is we've got nothing but time, right? Um, in other words, right, I, I point out to a lot of the kids say, like, coach, I'm not hit my driver well enough, right, well enough today. And, and they can't actually tell me that it, they can't hit their driver. They have to say they're currently struggling with. I'm one of those. And uh, I always remind them that there's snow on the ground outside. So I think, I think we're okay. And, uh, and uh, I've seen people that have had this before and I've seen them come out the other end. So, um, so I don't think actually as a, as a mentor, as a coach that you can fix anything. I don't inherently believe anyone to be broken. I think what you do is you inform them that you're there with them now. Now, tour players don't like that. <laughs> they want you to fix them now or they'll go find someone that will. Um, with, with children, you just want to let them know that you're there. And I always say this about teenagers, right? And my oldest is nine. So maybe I'll have a different opinion in you know, four <laughs> years. But I always tell the teenagers that are on my team, because we have five levels, um, that uh, when, they, when, they're, when they turn you know, 13 or whatever, I start liking you when your parents stop. And I also tell them basically this, uh, that as they get better, I get worse. So in, in a weird way, and that's an interesting way of saying it, because on one hand, I'm telling them, I actually, they become inherently more interesting to me when they become very much more difficult. And um, as they show uh, progress, improvement, um, you know, you got to know when to go to the whip and then you got to know when to put your arm around them, right? So uh, or you as they them become, exactly. So when you're using, uh, you, you know, various tactics with juniors to help them improve, um, that's that's when they graduate and and you know uh i'm not easy i know that but um but it but it comes it comes from a good place cool so we've got a couple questions about your juniors can you tell everyone um what are the five levels and and really quickly because we only have 15 minutes left and i have tons of questions left oh, what sure. are the five yeah. levels and how big are each of those you know how often do you see them each week how big are those groups um can you talk to that Sure, I'll do that real quick to get everybody's questions. So we have uh, Division One, Division Two, uh, Future Stars, Pre Elite, and Elite. And Division One tends to be our Nike Golf Camp. We did, uh, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we didn't have that this year. We did 650 the year before in a 10 week span. So it's about 60 to 70 kids um, every single week, and that is where we kind of target them for showing some ability and put them into D2. Wait, did you and say 50 or 60 kids a week? Uh, 60 to 70. Okay. Jeez. Yes. Yeah. So 60 to 70, all my coaches get together. We target kids. And by the way, targeting kids might be that they swing and hit it. Okay. Uh, for the D2 portion of that. And then I, I usually tell parents, gosh, if I have them for 10 years, um, you're paying for college now. It, again, if, if they're that into it. So yeah, five different levels. It's voted on every season. By season, I mean like autumn, you know, and, and winter and all that. Each season, um, it's voted on by their coaches to ascend them. Apart. It's based on ability. It's not based on age. And how many times a week do you see each kid? Like oh. how many how many times do they come see you? At least twice a week, uh, if not three times a week. And then in the summer, it could be four times a week, which, all, which actually includes uh, the golf course. So there's a play day. So there's always, we all, we have them learn through competitive environments. So that is three lessons. One is including a playing lesson. Yeah. So in the summer, they're going to have a play day too. So that'd be uh, three, uh, 
practice uh, practices. I always I, I tell parents it's the practice that the high school should have offered your child but doesn't because right. the history teacher is driving the bus. Yeah, right. Um, and sorry, Jake, I we're ending at 215. I'm used to the hour mark. So I did not mean to rush us, by the way. So we're going from 115 to two. Sorry, and you're it's 1215 to 115. Sorry. I was trying to rush through our questions and we actually have plenty of time left. Um, okay, so we have a whole bunch of questions. I've heard that you teach a child of golf starting out at the green and working out. What age junior would this not be applicable? Boy, that, that's a great question. And you can tell with Ashton, I mean, he's one and he knows how to chip and putt. He can swing a little bit too, but we chip and putt every day. Um, so what age would that not be applicable? It would depend on the child's goals. I am keenly aware. I am a, I am a statistics nerd. I am, I am very numerical in how I uh, break down improvement. Um, so uh, a lot of these competitive environments involve combines. So they are constantly graded in these competitive environments. And they have leaderboards that they move up on. And if they struggle, they fall down on. And I really think that that's something a, a tournament player has to get used to. So uh, when it comes to, I, I did see the Tiger doc where it said uh, Earl taught him from the green backwards. And I think that's okay. And I am keenly aware of Mark Rohde's stats that, that every shot counts, which talks about the importance of the second shot. And I'm also aware of Ben Hogan and, and Byron Nelson saying the most important shot was the tee shot. So what I would tell you is this, um, golf instruction by and large, and I know there's a lot of progressive coaches on here who do not do this, golf instruction by and large has been uh, grab your six iron, hit a few, look back and say, how's my swing look? That doesn't happen in, in my golf academy. What we do is we wear out sand wedges and drivers and putters, and that's it, because you will not hit a, enough good six irons to be great at golf. In fact, they rarely ever have to take those clubs out at a practice, um, just drivers, just wedges and just putters. And it's a ton of it. I'm pretty sure if you can start the hole and I'm pretty sure if you can finish the hole uh, that you'll figure the rest out. And all of our kids are stupid long. So in high school golf with the yardages they play, they will mostly have drivers. They will mostly have wedges and then they'll have to, you know, cash in with the putter. So right. that's a, I hope that answers your question. I, I, I know that's got, but I would just wear out those three clubs if I'm training uh, juniors in general. I love it. And uh, on a playing lesson, are you playing nine holes? Am I playing? Well, you're not. <laughs> are the students, are they playing nine yes. holes? Yes, definitely. So we have a competition every single week. Um, uh, a lot of them are creative. Uh, we play this thing. I got this from Tiger Woods uh, video game uh, back in the day, which I think we played at 1.15 a.m. in college. Um, we uh, basically it was called battle golf. So that would be one. Of, I'll give you some of the stuff we play, but that'd be one of them that the kids really play uh, or really enjoy playing where maybe the average person's like battle golf. I mean, I know stroke play and I know match play. What, what's battle golf? So battle golf is when they go out there and they win the first hole against their competitor, they get to take a club out of their bag. Right. So usually they grab the putter or the driver. They usually grab one of the three clubs that make them practice with. Them oh, most. I love that. Right? That is so fun. Someone so, just asked if that if you're playing as a scramble or if it's the own ball. So battle golf is fun. That's cool. battle golf's fun. And then on the next hole, if the other player wins, they can they can elect to get that club back or they might say, you know, I'm glad you took that club on the first. hole. I never liked that club anyways. Give me your. And it's so funny. Uh, you know, you, you have to at the at, after the last hole, you got to make sure all the clubs end up in the right bags and stuff. But uh, <laughs> That's yeah. your, then the parents really get pissed off. Right. And then they have to come drive <laughs> clubs back after practice. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Uh, reminds me of the Queen's Gambit. It's like sort of like a chess match. Right. Are you watching that? Queen's Gambit? It's very it's topical show. of you. Yes, I, of course. Of course. One of my favorite movies of all time. And, and I totally recommend. Uh, definitely watch the, the Queen's Gambit, but uh, I totally recommend all instructors who teach juniors to watch the movie Searching for Bobby Fisher. Please put that in Lots the chat window, Kelly. That's a great nugget. Uh, golf yeah. is, the, is the reward was one of our nuggets that we've quoted earlier and that one as well. Um, okay, what size are your junior group lessons? I think we answered that. What? How many do you have in each group? Okay, so At when they time. make... When they make the team, that's different than when they're in camp. I mean, when they're in camp, we divide them into three stations. 
Um, so you can do the math on 70. That's a lot of coaches. That's a big uh, amount of staff. But when they're, uh, when they're on the teams, typically our practices don't involve more than 10. I saw a question said, how many coaches was that? If they are asking about my USA junior team, typically with 10 players, we might have as much as three coaches there. And all with differing backgrounds. It, it, it really what I've tried to provide Chicagoland golfers is I want to put a team around them. So they have a short game. I, I don't want to be the voice of all things, nor should I be. Because um, I've seen that work at the highest level. And so uh, we have a short game uh, coach. We have a full swing. Um, I basically oversee it. We have a DPT. Um, and uh, we have access to a sports psychologist. Nice. Who's so <laughs> I don't um, know about your voice on all things, but I do know that we believe in your voice on all things pressure map. As yeah. you know, you're one of our top experts. That's so, a master segue. Um, what? That's a master segue, by the way. You are such a pro. Well, I, you know, you know me, my, the pressure mat's my favorite technology. You know, I'm going to bring it up. Everybody probably that is tuned in knows that I'm going to bring up the pressure mat. I completely believe in it. We've talked about it a lot. One of our questions, and then I have a little surprise for you, is um, how often do you use the pressure mat with your juniors? Right. So, um, in, We'll even go beyond. I, I use V1, my, my V1 branded golf academy to communicate uh, with my juniors and with the parents. Um, the funniest thing is that's probably the thing I post the most on my story or, or even on my page on my Instagram is my juniors. Um, so, and you'll always see V1 tag. So I use V1 Pro. I use my branded academy to constantly keep the parents in on the loop to, uh, uh, I know it allows us to speak for 10 minutes. Um, I, I can't, I, I, I don't listen to anything. I don't listen to anything on YouTube for 10 minutes. It's usually about 90 seconds. Like, here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. Here's a drill to do it. See ya. So um, it goes to the parents. It goes to the, the, the child. Everyone's rowing in the same direction. And, um, and then basically uh, that is always uh, how I used to communicate with them. I think communication with the well, I, I actually call their parents their sponsors, right? Because sponsors pay for stuff. So I go, make sure your sponsors see that. Um, and then when you're talking about uh, the pressure mat, so if you're going to provide an experience for your clients, you're doing it to one, to, you know, obviously an experience uh, for them is a good thing, but um, it's also a differentiator. So when you're, uh, when you're offering something different than the person down the street, um, I think that's important to building any uh, clientele base. So um, the experience, and, and here's the other thing, you know, my wife can't download an app, but my nine-year-old and six-year-old know how to, so they'll just do it for her. Kids are, they gravitate, they gravitate towards technology, okay? So basically this, uh, not, not, only, not only are they more into it where previous generations might say, well, that's too technical. It's not technical to the juniors. So when we get on the pressure mat, which is quite often because it's always set up, it's always uh, an option. And that's included in their you know, swing analysis, their monthly swing analysis. Um, we're always looking how they interact with the ground. And, you know, and I'm sorry, um, and I wasn't taught this way, but if you're teaching juniors, you're, your kids need to hit it further than the kids that are taking lessons down the street. So I'm always looking at how they use the ground for power. Um, there's a lot of questions over in our chat about specifically what kids do with ground force. I don't want to go too far into that because we could talk about that for three hours. I mean, we have before, yeah. right? Um, but I would say to whoever asked that, there's a lot of questions. Um, there are lots of great recordings from folks like Jake and Richard Hughes analyzing pressure traces for students, young juniors, um, small people versus long drivers, um, different clubs. And I would also say, please join us on our Tuesday traces where we actually look at traces and analyze them um, individually. And we really learn percentages. This is not totally the place to actually get into too much detail there. But I do want to share um, a little surprise, Jake, that I created for you. Um, we have the V1 pressure mat and we've been putting it out in hands of golf instructors. I hear a lot that it's really difficult to learn how to use it, which is why we've asked you to share some of your knowledge. But in the meantime, we finally have created a V1 pressure mat certification program. And my team decided that 
Um, of course, you are one of our experts. So I'm going to share my screen really quick, and I'm going to show you that we have created the very first <laughs> V1 pressure mat certification certificate. You get the very first one, serial number 001. <laughs> and I kind of wanted to share one more thing with you. My team thought that we should give two away today. So what do you think about that? I don't know if I agree with the second one. <laughs> Come on, oh come on. But so, if my mom uh, the is news watching is, this, the if news my mom is, is watching this, she's she's never been more proud than when I <laughs> got my degree. So so as far as technology and for teaching outside, um, obviously video, obviously using the pressure mat with a wireless capability is really great for feedback for juniors and adults. And thank you for knowing that technology and sharing your knowledge. And we, we were really excited to have the certification. And of course, you are already certified. Okay, can I make a comment on that? Please. So we, we need we need to we need to start measuring um, and we need to start instructing. We need to start measuring uh, juniors, competitive players in the field of play if we're going to create better golfers. So what I'm saying is I, I'm totally OK that, you know, that there's a lot of researchers that I've learned a tremendous amount from. Actually, most of my uh, uh, knowledge has been an amalgamation of, uh, from researchers, not necessarily golf professionals. What I got from golf professionals was how to communicate. Where I got the information was from researchers. So if you want to go into a gym, shave your chest, and wear a bunch of sensors and hit foam balls, that's great. But that's not what I do. Uh, well, I think we need to be measuring um, these, these competitive level players in the course of play. So that's the advantage of the V1 pressure mat. That's the advantage of uh, V1 Pro uh, Golf Academy is that I can just do it on my phone very quickly, actually. The, the one place I want to observe them the most is while they're competing, because that is well, that will give me a glimpse into what is actually going on. The one place I want to measure the most is not indoors in a, in a gym or something like that. It's actually when they're competing. So what we do on those play days, um, and I think I've told you this before, but if not, um, what we do on those play days is there will be a tee box. It might be a par three. It might be a par five. And obviously we know that the clubs would change where we have it, the mat already set up ahead of them. So they come out there and they're playing for score or they're playing battle golf or something. So they have to hit their shot from the mat. And basically we'll see all of their tendencies. I, I would teach to tendencies, not, not to methodologies. Um, otherwise you're just, you, you're, you're just putting them in a pattern that you're comfortable teaching, but they're uncomfortable when they're playing. So I would rather know what that pattern is. And basically, when you're measuring, especially in a competitive environment, you are saving that player from uh, from your preference. This is great information. I love that. That's so good. Um, so, and also, by the way, when Jake's saying that he's taking the mat out on the course, that mat is wireless. There's no cables and he can throw it on any lie. So he can literally put it in a sand trap on the sand, anywhere, in a bunker, whatever. And, There's a video. Um, and yeah, there's a video on YouTube of Kevin Streelman, a bunker, me using that. Uh, that was at the John Deere Classic. And um, uh, the other thing I was going to say, if Anna's got it, um, you, you actually, we, we actually have them on uh, treadmills in between shots. So we do whatever we can to, um, well, to mess with them, but actually to simulate what they're actually out there to do. So when they hit inside on their simulator, um, uh, there's the video for Kevin Streelman. So Anna, if you could find, I, I think it's just a picture. It's not a video uh, of the kids on the, uh, the treadmills real quick. She'll you can find just show it. that. Yeah. And ba basically this, uh, it, there we go. So in between shots <laughs> um, uh, on the simulator, because obviously they would have to walk to their shots. Um, they will have to go on the, the treadmills on a steep incline with their golf bags. Uh, before they can go back into the simulator and hit their next one. So um, it, it's, you know, it's a little crazy, but I like I, crazy. So I like it. That is crazy. That's very good. So a couple questions. Um, the last few years, we have seen a big emphasis, emphasis on getting your clubs fit for each golfer. How important is this for juniors? More, more important than it is for anybody else. Uh, because, and um I'm sure a lot of people grew up in the house that I did where my mom was like, wiggle, you know, you're getting shoes, right? Wiggle your toes, wiggle your toes. Okay, good. You'll grow into them. Right. And, and there was probably two sizes too big. 
right? And we're at pay less, right? So um, what I would tell you um, is that, and what I would tell parents, because I think a lot of the golf pros on here know, um, what I would tell you is to, instead of growing into your clubs, like my pay less shoes, um, you want them to grow out and it's okay. It's okay if, they, if they've grown out of them for a little while, because the issues that you'll deal with, there are issues to growing out of your clubs, no question. The issues that you'll that you'll deal with are postural, right? But um, obviously, those uh, shorter, albeit lighter clubs, they also learn to swing faster. So postural issues are easier to correct than if they grow into their clubs. And a lot of their uh, compensations throughout their motion are not actually them their fault. Um, you'll see a ton of juniors uh, come out of their posture and their backswing because they are not able themselves to lift that golf club. So you could say until you're blue in the face, hey, we have to maintain dynamic posture in the backswing, which is language I never use with a kid. Um, but you have to you know, maintain your angle to the ground and they actually hear you, they do the drills, but their equipment would not allow for that. And then we talk about transitioning the club. You, know, you hear a lot on the internet, steeps and shallows. Again, a lot of that pulling down of the grip and transition towards the ball has to do with the fact that the, the, what they're swinging is too heavy for them. So um, let them grow. I, and the U.S. kids clubs are great because they're color coded. Let them grow out of the color. And if they're close error to the, the shorter, lighter, don't graduate them. I actually don't even know if they should be in that color until they're about halfway there. So, yeah. Good info. Do you ever have kids pass clubs down? I, yeah, I mean, I, I got hand-me-downs from my cousins, so, um, but uh, when it came to clothes, not to clubs, I mean, my hand-me-downs were from grandpa, who was the only person that played, but um, with our kids, um, we actually set up a program within our USA, because we do this with super speed, too, because they're doing a lot of training at home, where basically, um, you know, I guess everybody could go on Facebook Marketplace and sell the stuff, but we encourage, again, this is the constant dialogue, the constant communication, where somebody grows out in a pretty good shape, well, the funniest thing is, so, say they're a pre-elite player, well, there's that would fit to a D2 or future stars player because they started in their program. So we have that open dialogue where parents, um, you know, probably just give it to uh, the, you know, the player, but I, I guess they could sell it too. Yeah, that's cool. I love, I, I mean, with 70 kids, you'd think there's a lot of hand me oh, yeah. This is a really good luck putter. Take this and use this or whatever. Um, I pulled up, I've got the Streelman um, pressure mat video pulled up. I'd love to show it. Can you talk to it? Do you mind? I don't. I'm going to play it, see if I can get it pulled up. Do you see it? Yeah, perfect. Um, so that one in particular, we'll just, yeah, that one in particular was actually, I believe, at the back of the range at uh, TPC Scottsdale. And I was back there with Gabriel Hurstead, who is a short game coach. And he was very curious, um, especially, you know, watching the V1 pressure mat go into the bunker of what we were about to see. And, um, it, it, you know, really key points is, uh, you know, and some of this has to be based on lie environmental circumstance. Uh, but by and large, especially in the short game, you're going to see the pressure a touch on the lead side there. And it's going to be an abbreviated trace to the trail side, which means he's not going to have a lot of lateral motion. He's, uh, and here's the cool thing is actually he's not going to shift his mass a lot, but when you, uh, when you take his backswing right there, and again, this is just a quick thing. Um, when you take his backswing there, the V1 pressure mat will show that his center of pressure is moving to the trail side. And that's really only his hands, arms, and golf club because his mass is not shifting in there. So that's how sensitive the V1 pressure mat is, is that any little movement that you make shows up in the ground, especially in, so you can see that center of pressure moving back. And that's not Kevin necessarily shifting his center of mass too terribly much. It's really the hands, arms, and golf club swinging backwards. So even though he, he would look very centered or even a touch on the lead side, that center of pressure will move because he's moving the golf club. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, great visual here of the mat in a sand trap. Um, I do see a cable there, but this is a wireless mat. So um, this would be a wireless scenario. But thanks for calling out that video. Yeah, that was uh, that was done a few years ago. So okay. um, obviously, it's easier to do even now. Awesome. All right.
righty, I'm going to stop the share. And I have another really great question from Jim Estes about a drill. Um, Jim asked for those that pressure mat ground force question. It's kind of basic for those that get up on their toes at impact for irons and stay back on the back foot at impact. What drills do you have them do? So I actually, before I ever say that anything's a problem, um, I usually think that we're looking at their current solution um, to what the actual issue is. So to answer Jim's question, and I, I know who Jim is. I, I, it, I believe uh, Jim played on tour for many years, and uh, I think we follow each other on social media. So um, th thank you for tuning in, Pro. Um, basically this, uh, my first reaction to when I see a junior up on their toes or backing up with their irons or staying back, I, I, want, I usually actually think that it must be for good reason. They, they, there must be something that's making them have to do that to achieve results. So I definitely look, look at how the club is coming down. If it's coming down steep, then they would need to move away from the ground. Um, I definitely look how the club face angle is throughout the, and again, the V1 Pro is perfect because even the camera on my phone will, on the V1 app will catch the, the, the face angle. So if that face angle is terribly open and the pitch of the shaft is terribly steep, don't be surprised that they have to move away from the ground and then they have to organize that face angle. And by backing up, it allows them to flip the wrist. Now, is any of that advantageous to hitting a, an iron, especially in competition? Probably not. But the first step towards changing it is altering that. Remember what I said, every small movement that you make is reflected in the ground. So that's the first thing I check. I check what they're, how they're moving the golf club that would make them interact with the ground that way. Now, let's say those are in an acceptable range where the pitch of the shaft is getting shallower, the face is better. Um, then uh, if they still need some pivot encouragement, trapping it forward could be as simple as, especially if it's on a wedge, hitting some lead side drill. So up on the, just on the left leg and just making swings that way, doing some step through drills. And golf then, dance. Uh, do, yeah, uh, do, well, yeah, I've been doing a lot of golf dancing lately. Um, golf dancing for kick. power. Yeah, yeah, the flamingo kick. I've been doing a little golf dancing lately. Um, but that's when I would get into the drills as long as that is an acceptable tolerance. Um, and if they go up to their toes, I, I show them, uh, you know, Mo Norman, they have no idea who that is, but I show them uh, Kenny Perry, how flat footed those guys are. So I, I have them do that as a drill uh, uh, through impact. So that would be another way. I'm but not, those, I are think... the, those are the steps you have to take. It, it, the order of implementation when it comes to information is key. I actually always take any quote unquote problem that I see as their current solution. So I, I need to know why they need to do that to hit uh, an acceptable outcome. Right, um, thank you for that. I think uh, showing someone that data and talking to about them seeing it is helpful as well. I also love um, the hashism that you and I both know, the toes are your brakes, heels are your accelerators. That helps get you out of your toes for sure. I think we've said that a hundred million times. Um, Jake, we have six minutes left. How can the good people, there's hundreds of people, how can people grow junior golf business online and remotely? Great question. Um, so if Anna can find this, because I'm sure you're tired of looking at my face, uh, there is something, there is a slide in there called the three tens, if you could bring that up really quick. Um, and you, if you, when you see this, if you think, well, that's not how to just grow junior golf. That's how to grow your business. You are correct because I ripped it off from, <laughs> it wasn't Tony Robbins. I don't know who it was actually. It was probably uh, Jordan Belfour. Um, so anyways, uh, the three tens are this and uh, my mom has her own real estate franchise. So I actually thought that that's what I was going to do when the psychology thing uh, scared the heck out of me. So um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. You're going to have to keep it in play, but uh, the three tens basically is this, this is how to grow your business. And this is how to um, grow your junior program. This is how to grow anything. Uh, this is how people look at you. So their confidence in you as a person. So where is that on it? And, and you need, and by the way, you need to do this every fiscal quarter. Where is the confidence in you as an instructor, as a person? Are you credible? Uh, have you done anything to create awareness, to increase that confidence? How is your current relationship status with your uh, clients? Because basically this, it is far easier, it is far easier to keep a, a client than it is to find a new client, okay? So where is their confidence and level that you currently on a scale of one to 10? 
And if it's below a seven, then that's something you need to look at. Confidence in your facility. How is your facility viewed? Um, where is your facility located? So when you guys heard that I had 650 kids in my program, don't think for a second it's just because Jake is so great. You can see the sky. Oh, don't worry, we didn't think that. No, I'm so kidding. Hurtful. That's so I'm hurtful. Just kidding. And you, we do you think know, you're I great. Think, <laughs> no, whatever. And but all the 70 that, sets of parents agree, Jake. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> the uh, you can see the Chicago. So again, as a real estate kid, um, uh, it's location, location, location. Many businesses send people out where that's their job is to scout locations of where they would open up new facilities. You can see the Chicago city skyline from one of mine and that's where that golf camp is. So confidence in you, confidence in your facility. Um, where is that on a scale of one to 10? And then confidence in your product. What are you selling me? And if you're a golf coach, I'll tell you exactly what you're saying. And we call ourselves teachers, it's interesting, but we're actually in sales. If you're gonna grow a program, at what you're selling is results. You're in the results business. You're actually not in the teaching business. My wife's a school teacher. She's in the teaching business. I'm in the results business. So basically this, uh, what I am saying, I, I'm, I am not offering you necessarily, you are not paying for time, though I will put my time in it. You are paying for a result, whether that happens in five minutes or five hours. Um, you know, that is what I'm there to do. So if you take that to your junior programs and you constantly reanalyze where people's confidence levels are in those three things, I find it impossible to not improve. And, and I, I find it impossible to fail. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I am going to use that in my own personal business life. Um, and in the last two minutes, I would love to talk about the V1 environment and how you receive data from your students. So really quickly, um, everyone, if you don't already know, V1 Golf is the free app that Jake's students and hopefully his students' parents are using. I say that because Jake has the ability to send voiceovers to the student, but then also copy the parents to keep them in that loop. Um, Jake uses V1 Pro, so he has lots of tools and tour model swings and drills that he can attach to his voiceovers. But there's a V1 environment that keeps you from having to manage videos and it's a seamless transaction um, from coach to student within the app. Um, Jake, do all your students use golf? Yeah, most of them use golf. And if they don't use golf, they use my online branded academy, which is on my website. And basically we have it set up. We, meaning you help me with that. I just do, I just do what Mandy and Kelly tell me, okay? <laughs> If, if nothing else, just do it. Get in contact with Mandy and Kelly and just do what they tell you. All right. So they set it up basically where there's a portal where my kids uh, can go on there and load up their, their swings and not have to pay. And then obviously, um, you know, Joe 18 handicap in Oregon um, that he's going to have to do it another way. So um, they are constantly uh, filling that thing up and they should be. Because I always tell them if you're not practicing in between practice, you will improve just not as much as the ones that are. So that shows me that they are putting the effort in. And so I just like the constant dialogue. And I teach, I, that's another thing I teach. I teach them how to tape their own golf swings because anyone that does have their own V1 branded academy can get, I mean, how do you look at, how do you analyze a swing from the anti view, right? I, I love that view. So uh, you <laughs> teach them how to teach themselves. Hey, and I, by the way, I don't know if you guys still have this, but um, there you go, a little yep. product placement there. Yeah. So my kids, my kids use this, right? Yeah, that's a phone holder that sticks onto an alignment stick. They're available on our website. I think they're super slick, super easy. Yep, it goes on an alignment stick back there. So they, and the alignment sticks about waist high and I teach them about 90 degree angles. So again, if they're sending you bad videos, it's shame on you, not them. You have to teach them how to do it. So um, they better be loading up my inbox uh, for their golf swings because I need them practicing, especially, and by the way, this builds, uh, this builds loyalty to your program because a lot of them, especially with the pandemic, a lot of my parents of means are, you know, they're taking off to Florida yeah, and they're going to remote learn down there, you know, and, and I tell them, and so they want to drop your program for a month or something like that. And I'm sitting there going, no. I mean, you're going to Florida, right? You're going to play golf. You're going to practice. Great. And if you're in my program every day, then uh, you need to be sending me swings. So, so this, this has retention value uh, in your programs when you can constantly communicate. So when they do travel, they, they still feel involved and they're still training remotely. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's super critical. Thank you for sharing that. 
Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to wrap up our seminar because we are going to be joining uh, are joined by Richard Hughes here in a few minutes. But you guys, please find Jake at jaketherm.com. His contact information is there. You can also check out his link to the V1 Marketplace. He's also very active on Instagram. I would highly suggest you go follow him there. He's a super high level instructor working with all the great technology and he has super cute kids. So you'll get to see those videos as well. Jake, thank you so much for your time. I um, love, love working with you, love supporting you. So we really appreciate it. And we love having you as a member of our V1 family. So thank you so much yeah. for sharing all your, your good news. As they, as they said, and white man can't jump, listen to the woman. Get in touch with Mandy, get in touch with Kelly, and just do what they say. Seriously. <laughs> thank you. We have a lot of fun along the way. We love supporting folks like you. Thanks, Jake. Have a good one. Cheers, everyone. See you soon.